So Karen, can you, um, in a nutshell, tell us who you are professionally? So I am a, an accredited psychosexual therapist, yep. a relationship therapist, and also um, a trauma-focused art therapist. Wow. wow. How long have you been doing that? I have been doing this for a long time, probably about 12 years or more. 12 years? Mm. Wow, that's, that's, that's a lot. And you've been practicing this um, in Sydney? I've been in Sydney. So originally I started working for um, an organization, Anglicare, um, and stayed there for a number of years. And then I moved into, started moving into private practice, but I've also worked for Rape and DV New South Wales and for a women, uh, local women's health service in, in our area. Okay, so you tell me, what did you learn in terms of your profession when you were at Anglicare? I learned a yeah. lot. Yeah, I learned yeah. a lot. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say it was so, so much learning, but the experience gave me confidence. So mm. that's mm. where I, I learned confidence. I learned to work with lots of different cultures and backgrounds and people. Um, so I worked in a, a, an outreach centre um, in Sydney Southwest. Um, and so there were lots of complex presentations um, and, and different types of clients that I worked with. So you worked with people from different cultural backgrounds, is that right? Yes. Do you want to maybe pick maybe two, three, four that you remember in terms of uh, diversity? Um, I think in, in general, I worked so I work with people from faith backgrounds. All right. I also work a lot with the LGBTQIA community, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then people from um, cultures like Zimbabwean cultures, African cultures, um, Middle Eastern cultures. I have also Korean clients, Chinese clients, so and Indian clients from an Indian background. So, and then of course Australian. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So, so after Anglicare, where did you go? After Anglicare, I went to work in, I had, took, took a, um, yep. I had a contract with a local women's service called Wilma in um, southwest Sydney, and I worked there primarily um, supporting women. So it was a women's only service. Mm. So supporting women, particularly those who were um, survivors of domestic violence. Mm, mm. Oh, um, so you worked there for how long? So I worked there for about four or five months. Um, I was still working at Anglicare at the same time, so um, uh, I was allowed to do that. Um, and then, at, and then, probably at the same time, I also started my private practice. Mm -hmm. So, so I had three what really different areas of that I was working in. Mm -hmm. What made you trigger to start your own practice, uh, private practice? Um, I became really interested in sex therapy and working in that area and there wasn't a l in much scope for me to do that um, working in organizations. Um, so it was primarily that that I, I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to specialize more um, and when you're working in organizations it's often funding for specific programs that limit the scope of what you can do. Okay, so you are a specialist in sex therapy, right? I'm a specialist in sex therapy but also uh, working with with um, as a as a relationship therapist, and my background is actually in art therapy, so I'm a creative arts therapist. So I've been able to use br bring that as a new as, as something a bit unique to the kind of work that I do. So that informs my practice, whether I'm doing relationship counselling or sex therapy, and more in the, probably in the last few years, I've focused more on trauma work. So working with um, anyone who's experienced um, childhood trauma, um, attachment injuries, and of course, sexual assaults. And Did you see um, from the sex therapy, we link up with the art, uh, those things are linking up together? Yes, okay. yes, very right. much so. Yeah, it doesn't mean that, that every client has to um, be drawing or creating something, but using creative arts is like using a different language so it's a language that doesn't need words necessarily and um, can help people to express what's going on inside their, their inner worlds their their thoughts their experiences in a way that's very gentle and very safe 
and actually then transcends um, across, you know, it's, it lends itself to working with, all, with people from all sorts of backgrounds and walks of life because it's a universal language. Mm. Art is a universal language. Yeah, so is sex, right? Yes, mm. yeah, mm. so the two work well. Together. Mm. Yeah, I think working with diverse cultures, it's really important to listen to and to understand what clients are bringing to you and what they want and need, rather than prescribing a particular modality or treatment plan. So it's really fine tuning and really listening and understanding and getting a good sense of what's going to fit for this person in terms of what they're bringing from their cultural backgrounds to the therapeutic space. Your background currently is an individual. Can you talk us about your background? So I was born in Zimbabwe and um, grew up there for most of my life. And then um, in my 20s, I went to study in South Africa at university and then ended up moving to South Africa and stayed there for a long time. I also spent a lot of time in Botswana. So I actually went to boarding school in Zimbabwe and then lived in Botswana, which was amazing and wonderful. It's an incredible place. Uh, and then because of the political climate in South Africa, um, as a family, we made a decision. You know, I got married, had two children. We made a decision to immigrate in 2000 to Australia, just when they were having the, the Olympics. Um, and I, I, work, I started off my career working in human resources and then teaching and then discovered this amazing thing called art therapy. I'm very creative. I like drawing and creating. And that was just like a match made in heaven. Um, and, and that actually helped me process a lot of my own uh, trauma that I'd you know, grown up with living in, in Zimbabwe. Um, and then migrating because it's, it, it's very, you know, that was really difficult migrating mm. from, mm. A, mm. F from a, a very different culture to here, to Australia. Um, so it gave me a good understanding of what that was like. Um, yeah, and then it just sort of all emerged and, and flowed on from there. Um, what brought me to sex therapy and relationship counseling was I went through, I went through a divorce and um, after 20 years of marriage and that broke down and it was very difficult. Um, and that sort of got me on this journey where I, I wanted to not make that mistake again and learn from it. Um, part of that was that I had some issues around painful sex that actually contributed to the breakdown of, of that relationship. One of the factors, there were others. Uh, and I became interested in trying to help people. Um, at the time, I didn't know where to go, who to talk to, what to do about it. Uh, I should have gone maybe see a sex therapist then, but I, I didn't know that that, that would be an option. Um, and then I found myself, um, after that divorce, I met somebody else, whom I'm married to now and we have a really great relationship. It's not without uh, hard work, so good relationships require hard work. Um, and then I started studying sex therapy because of that earlier interest. And I really, really enjoy helping people to have pleasurable, connected um, sexual lives and sexual relationships and, and healthy, robust, resilient relationships is what I get a lot of pleasure from. And then as well, helping people to recover from trauma. Mm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Karen, do you want to explain how many languages do you have an understanding of? How many languages do you want to and uh, also say them? Please? Yes, so I, I can speak a little bit of Afrikaans. As I learned Afrikaans at school, so I can say, um, um, I can, I don't know Shona too well, I'm learning. Um, I can say Dumela, Khetsohili, and then of course, um, Zulu Undebele, Konjani Wena, you know, uh, Saubona, Sunny Bona, Saubona, yeah. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. So it, there's, it's a smattering, but it's an area that I would like to particularly the Shona language because I am part of a 
lovely, very welcoming, very accepting, beautiful community of um, Zimbabwean women that have embraced me. And I really want to honor that by trying to learn the language. Beautiful. Karen, yeah. you've been amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's always lovely to have you. Oh, thank you. <laughs>